Hello and welcome everybody, this is Roland Hartman from graphicinmotion.com and it is tutorial time again. In this tutorial I will show you how to create a really nice photo slideshow with 3D parallax effect. I recently uploaded a new After Effects template and then I got a lot of requests how to create this effect and this is exactly what I want to show you today. So let's take a look at what we are going to create today. You see that the main effect of this tutorial and of this slideshow is that we get the impression that we are moving in a 3D environment, but actually these are all only flat images, flat photos. So we will create a 3D setup where we can travel through with our camera to get this nice parallax effect. Then I will show you a few tips and tricks how you can improve this look. And I will also show you how you can transition from one scene into the next with this nice camera tilting effect. I don't know how much time we will have left then, but I want to show you how to create the title inserts and maybe I will also show you how to create these little details here that just increase the feeling of depth a little bit. Okay, so you see we have a lot to cover, so let's get started with the tutorial and let's jump right back into After Effects. Before we get started with the tutorial, please let me mention that you can of course also get this template or this slideshow as a template on my website, which is www.graphicinmotion.com. You will find a link in the video description that you can find all my After Effects templates, a bunch of free tutorials, and of course also this Romantics Parallax slideshow. You see that we have two different versions included here, a long version and a short version. And as you will see during this tutorial, it really is a time consuming process to create such a slideshow. So you can save a lot of time by investing $28 and getting this template. And it would also of course support me, which I would really appreciate. Okay, let's get started with the tutorial. And in After Effects, first of all, we need to create a new composition. Make sure that you use the HDTV 1080 preset. The frame rate is not that important, but make sure to use this resolution because otherwise all the values that I will later, uh, tell you later on during this tutorial will not match. Let's rename this composition and I will call it main composition for now. The duration is 20 seconds. For the tutorial it's not that important because I only want to show you one transition between two scenes. If you want to create a whole slideshow then of course you should make this way longer. So let's create this composition and let's create a new composition by pressing Ctrl and N. And this time I want to change the resolution to something like 2080 times 1320 and this will be our footage composition. And we need a little bit more room here, so I made it a little bit bigger and I will call it footage one and the duration is also 20 seconds. Now the next step is to enter a photo to our footage composition. So make sure it's open in the timeline and then double click in your project window and import one of your photos. In my case, I will use a stock photo. I will share the link in the video description. You can download this for free from the internet. So let's take this photo and drag it into our footage one composition and let's make sure that it is scaled properly. So press S on the keyboard and scale it down. The exact value here is 38%. And what I want to do now is I want to pre-compose my footage composition. So let's select this footage composition and let's drag it on this composition icon here and let the mouse button go. This is how you can pre-compose compositions. And inside this footage 2 composition that I just created, first of all, let's rename this because this is a little bit confusing otherwise. So this is my footage precomp 01. Inside this footage precomp, I will now create a 3D setup that we will need to create our 3D parallax effect. So the first step to do this is to turn our footage into a 3D layer and you can do this by activating this little 3D icon here. If you do not see this, then just click these switches here or press F4 on your keyboard to change the layout. So make the layer 3D and now we want to apply a mask to this layer. To apply a mask, we simply select our ellipse tool. Now I zoom in here a little bit. And I make sure that my cursor is in the middle of my screen approximately. 
So line it up like that. Then I click and drag and I hold down control to create a nice mask. And now try to create a mask like if you would apply a vignette to this. I can give you the, the really precise numbers later on. But for now, let's just create something like that. And this is okay. Now let's select our layer and let's reveal the mask properties by pressing MM. And I want to change this mask from add to subtract and I want to give it a feather of 60 pixels. Okay, what we want to do now, we want to select this layer and create seven duplicates. So select the layer, press Ctrl and D on your keyboard until we have a total of eight layers in our composition. Now what we want to do, we want to select the bottom layer here, press M on the keyboard to reveal the mask and delete the mask from this layer because we do not want to have a mask on our bottom layer. Make sure that the masks are still available on the other layers. Now I want to distribute these layers in 3D space. So let's select all the layers and hit P to reveal the position properties. For our top layer here, we will add a value of minus 3000. And I will change this camera view for now, just that you see what I'm doing here. So I will change it to a custom view and I will zoom out a little bit here. You don't have to do this. This is only that you can see what I'm doing like so. Now let's select the second layer and let's type in minus 2000 at the C value here, 2000. The third one gets a value of minus 1200. Then we enter minus 600 for the next one. Then minus 100. The next one gets a value of 300 on C, so plus 300 this time. Then we have 600. And the last one gets a value of 800. Now you see what I did. I just distributed these layers in 3D space and you see that the distance between them gets narrower the further back our layers are. So let's change back to our active camera. And what I want to do now is I want to change the resolution of this pre-composition. So let's come to my composition settings here and let's change the composition width to 1920 times 1080. So standard HD TV resolution and click OK. Good. Now we have to add a camera here. Go to layer and select new camera. In the camera settings, make sure it is a one node camera and make sure that it is set to a 15 millimeter preset and click OK. Now, if you take a look what we have here, you see we have this kind of a tunnel effect. And if I choose my camera tool, my dollying tool, you see I can travel through this now. But of course, it is not lined up correctly. But this is approximately how we will create our 3D parallax effect. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to specify the distance that my camera will travel within one scene. So let's select the camera. Let's press P on our keyboard to reveal the position. And I already played around with these values quite a bit. So I will just type in a value of minus 4600 now as my starting point. And I will set a keyframe right here in the beginning. So at frame number zero. Now let's move to six seconds with our cursor. And let's set a C value of minus 3500. So this will be our end point of the animation. So you see, we are traveling through our layers here. And now, of course, we have to change the sizes. And we also have to change the settings of our masks to create a really nice parallax effect. First of all, what I want to do is I want to easy ease these keyframes on my camera. So select these keyframes and press F9 on your keyboard. Now what I want to do is I want to move out to the first keyframe here to position to frame number zero and I want to select my top layer here, footage number one top layer. And now I want to edit the scale. So let's press S for scale and let's scale this up. And I actually already played around quite a bit with these scale values. So I will just type them in now. So let's just set this to 192%. And believe me that it lasted really a long time to figure these values out. So you normally you just uh, play around and eyeball it, you know. 
and just try to get a nice setup and you try to line it up and you also try to create a nice parallax effect and you have to yeah, balance these values a little bit. But for now, I can just type in the values that I already figured out. So the second layer gets a scale value of 325%. Then our third layer gets a scale value of 422%. The next layer gets a scale value of 494%. The next layer gets a scale value of 561%. I think that this is now, yeah, it's the right one. The next layer gets a scale value of 615%. And the last or the next one gets 615%. 54 and the last layer our background layer gets a scale value of 680 percent okay so you see that if we take a look at this now we have a few small problems here it looks like they are not really aligning nicely and and the face of this poor guy here is, is somewhat uh, distorted or or cut off but now we have to change the masks and you actually you will never get this to to be perfect you always get these little distortions and little little overlaps in on the side of your your footage but we will add a few effects that will make this a little more subtle so let's take a look quickly here i will change back to my custom view again and then you will see what i created here just so you know what we are doing what we're trying to do here we actually created this kind of a setup and this is exactly what we want. So this is basically the setup to create a nice parallax effect. Let's go back to our active camera. Now what I want to do is I want to change the lineup of our masks a little bit. So therefore we select our first layer here. We press M to reveal the mask and then we click on this shape here. And this will bring up these properties here. And now I can type in exact sizes for these masks. Um, when I created this slideshow, what I did here, I would just double click on this layer or on the masks. And then I came in here and then I started, you know, to, to like uh, scale it and try to line everything up and yeah, I figured out what's the best size for this mask to create a nice parallax effect. And this is how I worked my way through it. Actually, I did this not on frame zero. I, I did it uh, inside my animation about, yeah, in the middle of it. Then I just was playing around with these settings until I found a solution. But I do not want to waste so much time. So we'll just use the values that I figured out during producing this template or this slideshow. So let's click shape on our top footage layer and let's type in the following values. So the first value here, the left value is 145. Then the top value is 127. The right value is 1936. That's good for my number practicing English numbers. 1133 is the bottom value and now let's click OK. Now let's select the next one. Let's press M on the keyboard again. Let's click on shape and let's type in the following values 203. Then I click the tab to jump to the next one 162, 1876 and 1157. And I bet that now you regret that you started this tutorial but Believe me, we will be finished with this very, very boring part soon. After the setup is done, then we will play around with a few effects and make this really look cool. So the next layer will get the values of 281, 209, 1799 and 1111. Then the next layer mask will get values of let's see not that i get lost okay 339 243 1741 1077 okay 
Now the next one, M to reveal the mask, click on shape and type in the following values. 393, 275, 1678 and 1045. Okay, so three more to go, or two more to go. So let's click M and on shape and then type in 480, no, 400, sorry, 458, 314, 1622, 1006. Okay, and the last one. at the values of 500, 340, 1580 and 980. Okay, so that's it. Now we set up the mask values and if you want to know where I get these numbers from, here I have a little note, you know. Oops, now After Effects is gone. I hope it didn't crash. No, okay. Yeah, I prepared. You won't believe it. I'm prepared for this tutorial. Okay, so let's close all these down. And now if I select all of these, you see, uh, we cannot see the masks now. It doesn't really matter. I will just uh, change the view again to my custom view. And let's take a look what we have here. And you see that basically what is happening here is that the mask expansion is, is getting smaller or the masks are getting smaller the further back on the layers they are so yeah this is basically this is basically what's happening here okay now we have our basic setup so if we change back to our active camera now now we can travel through our image and you see that of course we get some distortion as i said you cannot avoid this this is happening with this technique you know but doesn't really matter because we'll apply a few effects that will make this not that noticeable. The first effect I want to apply is I want to apply a little bit of a blur to the layers that are close to the camera. So the closer they are to the camera, the more blur they will get. So we start with this layer here, top layer, and we will add a fast blur for now. You can also take a box blur or something but I will take the fast blur because it will render faster and for the sake of this tutorial this is okay and I want to blur this out let's see I don't even know the values now but I think that 10 is probably quite good maybe let's set it to 12 that we have a little bit more room now let's copy this blur and paste it to all of our layers but not to the last one here on the bottom just Control V and now let's go through it and let's set this to maybe 10, the next one to 8, this one to 6, this one to, let's say, 5, this one to 3, and this one maybe to 1. So now we get a nice blurry effect. The top layers or the layers close to the camera are more blur, blurry and then the other ones uh, are not that blurry. And yeah, this also helps to hide these, these artifacts that we get while traveling through our image. Okay, so far so good. Now it is time to take our composition here and move to the main composition. So what I want to do now is I want to move to the main composition and I take my footage one pre-comp and drag it into my main composition. And what I want to do now is I want to come into this composition, the pre-comp and copy my camera. So control C and I will paste it control V into my main composition. And you see now nothing is happening. It is something happening, but this is coming from this camera here. So if I, if I deactivate the animation here, go back to the main, then you will see that nothing is happening. But when I now turn this layer into a 3D layer and activate the collapse transformation here, this little icon here, then you see we can use the animation of this camera to travel through the layers inside this composition. So collapse transformation works like you more or less like tell After Effects that these are a bunch of 3D layers and it should treat them like a bunch of 3D layers. Yeah. 
So now we have our nice camera animation inside our main composition. What I want to do now is I want to pre-compose this because actually I want to create two scenes. So let's create two scenes. So I select these layers here, press Shift, Control and C on my keyboard to create a pre-comp and now I call this scene one. Okay, now let's work on scene one a little bit and make this a little bit more interesting. So let's come in here. First of all, what I want to do is I want to add another effect here. Therefore, I will add a new adjustment layer and I will drag this adjustment layer on top of our pre-comp and then I will add an effect that is called, let me see, a lens, CC lens here. Distort CC lens. And with this effect added, now it looks a little bit weird, but we will improve this immediately. First of all, we have to increase the size and you can increase the size to 500. And now what we can do is we can enhance the 3D effect a little bit using this CC lens. So what I want to do in the beginning here, I want to set a keyframe for the size with a value of 500. And in the end of our animation, which is six seconds long, I want to change this value. So let's see how much we can do here. Do not want to overdo it because it gets quite distorted, but let's see a little bit of an effect we want to have. And the, the more you put in or the less you put in here, so the lower you set this value, the more extreme this will be. But maybe let's for now go with 200. Now let's press U to reveal the keyframes and let's easy ease these keyframes and let's create a quick run preview. Just change the resolution to half to create a faster run preview. Now you will see what this will do and this will enhance the effect that we are really zooming and traveling into this image here. It nearly looks like we are, we are traveling through these people here. So let's play this again. Now you see that our effect is working quite well. And I want to enhance this even more, so I will add a little bit of movement to my camera. So select our camera, press R on the keyboard to reveal the rotation and orientation properties. Hold down Alt on your keyboard and click the stopwatch at orientation here. And now we will add a little expression. You probably know this already. The wiggle expression, so type in wiggle, parentheses. Now we choose a value of 0 0.5. Uh, it's important that you really type point and not a semicolon. Then the semicolon or comma or whatever it's called. Comma, I think, not sure. And now you type in a value of 3. So this means that now the camera is wiggling the orientation in all three directions for 3 degrees uh, each 2 seconds. And you see that this will add a lot to our effect because now our camera is really yeah, traveling through this and has some perspective changes. And this will add to the feeling of this parallax effect quite a bit. Okay, so this is it for the basic parallax setup. What I want to show you now is how you can create a nice transition between scenes. To create a transition, we have to add a little camera animation in the end. Let's say that right in the end, our camera will tilt up. So I will select the camera, press R to reveal the rotation and I will set a keyframe and I want to be precise here. So let's move our cursor at five, five seconds and 12 frames. Uh, by the way, if you do not see it like this, you can always come here, click or hold down control and click this value you can choose or switch between time code and frames so let's let's set it to this time code here and let's make sure that your time indicator is on five seconds and 12 frames and now let's set a keyframe for the x rotation of our camera now let's move forward 12 frames so exactly to or 13 frames to exactly six seconds and let's take a look how far we can go here we want to tilt the camera up and we will do something like probably 20, I think the 20, yeah, let's try 25, maybe it will work with 25. And now let's select the keyframes and easy ease them. If you want to improve or enhance the quality of your animations, then I recommend that you do not only use easy ease, but that you come in here to the graph editor 
and start really playing with your curves but this is not part of the tutorial now uh, yeah maybe another time now let's duplicate this scene and we want to duplicate it inside our project and so let's select this scene here scene one and press ctrl and d to create a duplicate now we enter this scene by double clicking and i want to create a duplicate of my pre-comp as well so let's choose the pre-comp here let's ctrl d to create a duplicate and now let's replace this one here inside scene number two we create or we select our pre-comp then drag the new one down hold down alt and release the mouse and now i replaced the old composition with the new one now let's enter the new footage pre-comp double clicking on it and I also want to create another footage, of course. So let's create a duplicate of our footage composition inside the project window again. Select this composition, Ctrl D, select all these layers here, all the footage layers, drag this down, hold down Alt and replace them. What we can do now is we can import a new image. So double click and for now I will take maybe, let's see, like, um, yeah, let's take this image here. It's quite nice import this one and let's open up our footage to placeholder let's drag this image in here on top here delete the other one scale it up a bit that's a little bit too small actually like so one more okay and now if we go to scene two you see that we have a new scene with a new footage and also with a nice parallax effect now what I want to do is I want to create a nice transition in between these two scenes inside my main composition. First of all, what I want to do is I know that my animation is exactly six seconds long, so I can just cut my scene one here, just drag it in, hold down shift and snap it. Now I take scene number two, place it on top of my scene number one and position it right at five frames and 12 seconds because this was where we started the transition so take this here hold down shift and snap it in place and you see what is happening now this is of course no transition as we would like it to be so what we have to do here is we have to animate the camera in our scene too as well so let's enter this composition by double clicking let's select the camera and press u on our keyboard to reveal the keyframes what i want to do here is on frame number 12 so i type in 12 here i know that i want to have an x rotation of zero on frame number zero, I want to have exactly the same amount of rotation like I have in scene number one in the end. And these are 25 degrees. But actually, I do not want to have it exactly the same. That's a mistake. I want to have it the other way around. So I have to enter minus 25 degrees here. And now let's take a look at this. Of course, it will not look perfect now because we have no real transition here. But if we lower the opacity here, let's take a look. You see that at least the camera movement is nearly the same so it really looks like the camera is tilting the same way in both compositions and this is exactly what i want to achieve what i want to do now is i will create a quick transition mat here or, or yeah transition mat i can call it to create a nice transition in between these two compositions so let's create a new composition let's make sure that it is http preset and let's call this transition mat inside this transition mat we will create a quick transition setup if we take a look at the preview video again let's see you will see that i created transitions using um, watercolor watercolor effect yeah, it looks like a watercolor transition and I actually used pre-rendered watercolor elements to achieve this look. We will not do this for now because this is a little bit too much for this tutorial, which is already quite long. We will create a little bit more of a simple but similar transition. So let's take a look what we can do here. First of all, let's create a new solid and let's make sure that it is 100% white. Okay. Now what I want to add here is I want to add a linear wipe. Add the linear wipe effect. And now let's create a quick animation. And I want this to have an angle of zero degrees. And I want this to start at 100%. So I create a keyframe at frame zero with a value of 
And now I will move forward for 12 frames, so 12 frames, and then I set this to zero. And now I have this really, really, really basic animation. And this is of course not good, so we have to improve this. So let's easy ease these keyframes, but this is not good. Also, we need to work on this a little bit more to make it a little bit more interesting at least. What I can add here now is I can add a turbulent, turbulent displays effect. So let's add this and let's increase the amount quite a bit. Something like this maybe. Let's see. This looks not too bad. You see that this nearly looks like a paint transition now, like uh, or nearly like a little bit of a, a liquid or yeah. So this is a good starting point. And now we will add another effect and this is called roughen edges. So let's add the roughen edges effect to this. What I try to do now is I try to simulate a kind of a, yeah, this, this paint transition, but without using pre-rendered stuff here. So just let's make it with these effects and I will increase the border value here quite a bit. I also want to scale it down a bit and I want to sharpen the edges a bit. And the problem that I have here is that now I have these edges here and I definitely do not want these edges. So what I can do here is I can just scale up this whole layer until these edges are gone, like so. And now you see that I have this transition. And actually it's not too bad. What I want to do, I want to uh, decrease the size of the turbulence displays a bit. Something like that. Yep. Decrease this size here a bit, maybe something like that. I think that for now this will do. So let's come to our main composition again and let's drag in our transition mat on top of our scene 2. Let's line these two up here and let's set our scene number 2. I press F4 again to switch the layout here to a track mat of Luma mat. Now you see what this will do. So you see that now it nicely gets revealed and it definitely helps to sell this transition. Okay, so far so good. So let's take a look at uh, what we've got so far. I will create a quick run preview here. So let's set this to like so and create a quick run preview, half resolution should do, just to see what we have so far. And we are traveling through our footage, then we have a nice transition and yeah, this is how you can create a parallax effect. So if you want to learn a little bit more how you can enhance this, then stick with me. What I want to do now is I want to add a little bit of a light leak here. To add a light leak, I will enter my scene number one. And now you can download a few assets that I provide on my website. And these assets are actually two files. I will show you what you can download. The download link is in the video description. You can download one light leak, a pre-rendered light leak video, and you can download a watercolor element that we will use to create the title. So download these assets if you want, and then you can select them and just import them into our project. And another hint that I have for all you guys out there, organize your files. You know, this looks like a horrible mess. So I definitely want to organize this a little bit better. Therefore, I would create a folder for the assets, for example, and then drag in all the assets that I have got here. Light leaks, and I don't know why, but it just did not import my watercolor footage. I want to import this as well and drag it into the assets. Then let's create another folder for pre-comps or comps. And let's drag in everything that we do not need anymore, like this, like these two, and like the transition mat. And this looks way better. So I always organize my, organize my files, especially if I'm creating templates. Now let's continue with our project. So let's select the light leak layer here, or video and drag it into our scene number one and then I drag it on top of my adjustment layer here and let's make it 3D, a 3D layer. Let's position it, let's see how we can position it, maybe something like... I hold on shift to increase these steps a bit, so maybe something like that. I will position it at around minus 3000.
And now I will move my cursor to the beginning here and scale this up. So scale it up to that it covers the whole screen here, like so. This looks quite good. Let's see what we've got here. Now we're traveling pretty close to this, but it's okay. And now I have to change this blend mode here from normal to screen. Let's see how this looks like. Doesn't look too bad. It's a bit too strong probably for this shot. So let's decrease the opacity to something like 60 or whatever. Looks quite good. Now we add a little bit of life to this shot here and a little bit of depth as well. If you want to have more light leaks, then you can, of course, visit my website. I hope that it's not annoying that I always refer to my website, but you know, I share my knowledge for free, so I have to live somehow. So yeah, if you want to have light leaks, I of course have a nice light leaks pack. And you see that the light leak that I provided with this tutorial is only HD resolution, like 1280 times 720. If you need really good ones, then you can get this pack here that you have 15 or actually 20 files in 4K resolution. And yeah, check out this pack if you need some light leaks to improve your slideshows or your video edits. Okay, back to the tutorial. So now we have light leak and now we can add our title. To create our title, we will create a new composition and call it title or title one. And inside this title now we'll create a new text layer and I will type in title number one. Very creative today. And I will just align this in the middle here of my comp. And what I want to do now, I want to create a little backdrop here with my watercolor element that is also included in the download. So let's drag this in and you see this is just a small animation of a watercolor stain here animating on. So first of all, what we want to do that this doesn't appear after three seconds, we want to apply a time remapping effect. So right click on the layer and choose time, time remapping, enable time remapping, and then just drag it out to the end. And then it should stay on and this is quite good. Now we can apply a fill effect to this layer here. So let's apply a fill effect and give it a nice color, maybe something like, I don't know, something like that. Quite good. Now I will duplicate this or first of all, scale it up a bit because it's a little bit too small, like so. And I just disable this constraint proportions and make it a little bit narrow like this and duplicate it and now let's scale this and make this a little bit different like so rotate it a bit to create a bit of a variation here and change the color to maybe something like a nice this tone here looks quite good and we can change this to overlay so the colors mix nicely and maybe also just decrease the opacity here a bit just decrease the opacity here a bit, something like this to create a nice backdrop here. Like so, looks quite good. Or let's see, what can we take here? No, soft light. Yeah, soft light looks quite good as well. Let's take soft light and like this a bit more. Okay, now let's create a quick animation here. You see that these watercolor stains are animating on and actually they are animating on quite slow. This nearly lasts two seconds, so this is definitely too slow. So let's select these layers, press U on the keyboard and let's use our time remapping to speed this up. So I want this to, to animate on within yeah one second. So drag these keyframes in here to make this a little bit faster. Like so, this looks nice. And now I will apply a simple text preset, text animation preset to my title. So let's come into my effects and presets panel here. Let's enter the animation presets, presets and text presets. And in this case, I want to use one of the blurs and it's called evaporate. So let's select the text layer and let's 
add the evaporate preset and you see what this does is it evaporates the text but if we press u now and select these keyframes and come to animation keyframe assistant and time reverse keyframe then we have this nice build-up animation going on actually it's a little bit too too slow too so let's bring this in here a bit like so now you see this is building up and this is coming in quite nicely so we created a really really quick but nice title animation now let's go to scene number one and let's add our title in here and drag it beneath our uh, light leak here make it 3d this layer and now we have to position it so let's see the position here let's see maybe i position it at about how far are we traveling here like this okay so about minus 2000 maybe scale it up a bit and position it a little bit better something like that now i rotate it a bit to add a bit more depth here like so and actually i think that it is a little bit No, actually it's quite nice. I really like it. Okay. So the tutorial is already 45 minutes long. I will probably edit it a little bit, so it will be a little bit shorter, but it is already quite long. So I will stop right here and I will show you what we have so far. I hope that you can uh, move on from this. This is only the basic technique. You know, you can improve this and, and create really really something cool by the way if you want to create other directions of transitions you have of course just to change the rotation of the camera so if you want to create a transition from right to left then you just animate the camera's y rotation instead of the x rotation and so on okay in the end of this tutorial i want to invite you to visit my website again www.graphicinmotion.com there you can find all my after effects templates and you also can find a bunch of free tutorials so let's take a look here you can also find all these tutorials on my youtube channel on my vimeo channel whatever you prefer all of the tutorials are free to watch i hope that you can learn something here and of course i would also be very thankful if you take a look at my products at my after Effects templates, my stock motion graphics. I also have a few free texture packs here. Maybe you find something useful that can help you with your next project and save you a bunch of time. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you had a little fun and I really hope to see you soon. Goodbye.